We absolutely need energy storage for the energy transition. And the TU Darmstadt in Germany has come up with a pretty blatant idea. They have the idea of converting old coal fire power plants here in Germany into energy storage facilities and want to use iron for storage. This is because you can store quite a lot of energy in iron through chemical processes and then release it again at different locations and times. The whole thing is also supposed to be environmentally friendly. How the whole thing is supposed to work and how promising this iron burning really is, that's what we're going to talk about today. And with that, welcome to the German Science Guy. My name is Jacob and in Germany we say Los geht's. By 2030, we will need an estimated 100 gigawatt hours of electrical storage capacity in Germany alone. However, we are currently only at around a third of this. The Clean Circles research project at TU Darmstadt and KIT has now presented an exciting technology for using existing infrastructure for energy storage. They want to convert or retrofit coal-fired power plants. This conversion will only affect small parts of the power plant. The power plants will then no longer burn coal, but actually iron, which sounds a bit crazy, but it is really quite ingenious. We'll look at this in a moment, but first one more fact that I found quite impressive. Because according to the research group, if all the world's coal fire power plants were converted in this way, global CO2 emissions could be reduced by around 30%. Of course, you always have to examine such promises critically, so I'll take a closer look at how realistic the whole thing is later. But let's talk about the technology first. The basic idea behind this technology is that iron powder is alternately reduced and oxidized. When reducing, rust is converted back to iron by supplying energy and when oxidizing is happening, iron is converted to rust with oxygen and this releases energy in the process. To be more precise, at the beginning you simply have iron oxide, similar to rust, and this is chemically reduced using renewable energy. The oxygen is removed. As you can see here, this can be done either electrochemically or thermochemically. The first case would work in a similar way to hydrogen electrolysis. This means that the iron particles are dissolved in a liquid and a current is then passed through the solution. This causes the oxygen to escape from the iron oxide. A second possibility would be to use green hydrogen, which serves as a reducing gas and virtually strips the oxygen. The second method is currently more in the foreground because it's technically much more advanced than the electrochemical process. Theoretically, the first version would have the potential to achieve higher efficiencies because this intermediate step with the hydrogen is not needed. But as I said, it's simply not yet as major in comparison. In order to release the energy again, so to discharge the battery, the process must be reversed. To do this, the iron is oxidized again, therefore it is brought back into contact with oxygen. There are two options for this. Either you burn the iron, which is known as the dry cycle, or you oxidize it in a water vapor, or in the other words, it's the wet cycle. The dry cycle with burning is currently more common. The wet cycle would be more interesting if hydrogen is to be produced on site as required, for example for local industry. Well, and the electricity generation is quite classic here, because heat is released during oxidation and this heat generates steam, which is then converted into electricity using a turbine. I think this technology is amazing and I really wanted to share it on my international channel. So here's why. There are three reasons. Firstly, iron is cheap and available in surplus. Secondly, the process is reversible, so you can convert iron oxides into iron and back again. The same iron can therefore be used again and again, and I really mean again and again, not just 10 times, but infinitely. Thirdly, the energy density of iron is relatively high. If you look at it in comparison with hydrogen, for example, a three-person household could only get by for three to four hours with a bottle of hydrogen. With an iron-filled bottle, however, it could last a whole two days. However, iron has a fourth advantage, especially compared to other energy sources such as hydrogen or ammonia. Iron can be transported relatively easily and without any danger. After all, it is hardly toxic and therefore much less harmful than ammonia and you don't need such high pressure or extremely cold temperatures as when you're transporting liquid hydrogen. This means that in countries where there's a lot of wind and sun, the iron can be reduced and then transported to wherever it's needed and then oxidized again, thus releasing the energy. Energy. This makes the technology relevant not only as a local energy storage system, but also for exporting energy. 
When comparing such energy sources, it is of course always important to have concrete figures. The so-called round trip efficiency is a relevant value for this. So you have a certain amount of electricity that is stored at a certain place and time and the round trip efficiency is then the indication of what percentage of the original electricity can be generated again from the energy storage system. According to the research group, the figure is around 30%. This value comes from a study that was, when I did this video in Germany in February 2024, still in the peer review process and it seems like it still is today. So this means it's still being reviewed by other researchers. Just notice that this is something very normal. Actually, my last paper took almost over a year in the review process because reviewers do their work besides their normal research, so it sometimes takes very long to get a review. But what does this number mean? At first glance, 30% doesn't sound like that much, but according to the researchers, iron oxide is comparable or even slightly better than hydrogen. I also checked the data on hydrogen again and according to a relatively recent meter study, the round trip efficiency of hydrogen is actually around 28% depending on the process, but this depends on many factors and can also be lower. In addition to an expected slightly higher efficiency, iron would also have the advantages of easier transportation as already mentioned. And if you optimize the entire power plant process, you can increase efficiency even further. For example, if you not only use electricity, but also feed the heat from combustion into district heating networks and use it to heat households, this will increase the efficiency. Of course, this is not a specific advantage of iron oxide. It can also be done with other energy sources, but it is an important factor if you want to look at overall efficiency. As you can see, I find the project very exciting because it is a totally new approach, but of course this video also contains the big problem, or in German, das große Aber. I still haven't found a good translation that doesn't sound wrong. Maybe you have an idea how to translate it better. The große Aber is the part of my videos where we take another critical look at the topic. So, first of all, I couldn't find a huge problem at first, but unfortunately such an iron-fired power plant doesn't exist yet and so you can't really check the data on efficiency and so on in practice. But I already got an invitation from the research institute and hopefully we'll be visiting them in the near future, actually maybe already in November. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that and also the other science videos here on the channel. However, the working group is in the process of finalizing their pilot and from then on the goal is to bring everything up to industrial standards. The goal is for the first coal-fired power plants to be retrofitted by 2030, which sounds a long way off, but that's only six years away. Technical questions that are still open would be something like, how big should the iron particles ideally be? Or how dense should the iron powder be so that combustion takes place evenly and completely? But these are questions that can soon be tested at TU Darmstadt, where there's a power plan for research purposes on which they can work on precisely these issues. They want to start by the end of the year and the aim of the whole thing is to functionally demonstrate a certain threshold that shows that an industrial scale up can really be realistic. So they want to leave the laboratory scale and learn from the industrial scale. So to sum up, I think the idea of these iron power plants is pretty smart and I really want to take a look at the whole thing on site. I'm already in contact with the research group as I already said and I hopefully can visit them pretty soon. So subscribe and if you haven't already watched my new video about the most important machine in the world that you probably haven't heard of yet, click here and watch it. I guarantee you it's very interesting. And I say, bis zum nächsten Mal, macht es gut, euer Jakob.